Hello guys, how are you doing today? Um, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Richard, um, Richard Okola, and um, today we'll be having a quick walkthrough on how to cross-check um, whether your SOFP figures are going to be correct, as well as your statement of profit or loss. So SOFP means statement of financial position, and SOPL means statement of profit or loss. So some people can call it surplus statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, right? But today we're looking at how to um, use a mapped TD, right? To prepare a SOP, SOFP and SOPL using pivot alone. So it will be very fast. Um, so first of all, you'd have cleaned up your trial balance, um, which is typically, typically look like this, right? And then you have your figures reported somewhere here. So in this case, um, I introduced some additional colon. This is colon D, colon E, colon F, um, and then colon G. Ideally, your trial balance should have colon B and C already. So you can just group them. So um, maybe later we can go into some interesting facts about how to prepare, how, should, how your trial balance should report from your accounting system. But for now, I'll just give you a quick, quick sheet. So most accounting system will usually have your items uh, um, aligned this way. You have your assets in class of one, right? Then your liabilities in class of two, your P and L, no, your liabilities and equity, your liabilities class of two, um, equity in class of three, revenue in class of four, and then expenses in class of five, right? Something like that. Then some other things like that. So you always follow the particular so that you can easily know that this class of assets based on this GL code belongs to an asset or liability or expense and the likes. So yeah, um, without wasting much time because I plan to this to be as short as possible. This is the trick. Highlight everything, right? Including the number if you have the numbers there. Unfortunately, I could not get a one that has number, but I know that maybe subsequently I can do version two that will have numbers that can see how the thing runs into the pivot. So um quickly you just go to your pivot inside pivot um pivot table. Yeah, let me just go straight to this. So yeah, we have this on our pivot. Then we can quickly bring it, what are the account group? So you can go to account group one, bring it under the row, right? This one gives you your, of course, element of a financial statement. We have the assets, we have the equity, we have the experience, liability and revenue. Um, then we go to the second asset group two. You can see I'm arranging them. Asset group two helps us to break them in to the next step. So we have current asset, non-current asset, Equity retain any share premium, right? Arranged in line with those revenue items. So then that's that's next. Um, third one will now be grouping. We group them also. So what are the items that are under current assets? We have the advances, cash and bank, inventory, other payables, trade receivables, like that. Under our non current assets, we have PPE, right? That's good. So um, next thing is now to bring in um our um account description. Or let's do our FS group. FS group. What's your, what's your FS group? Let me check. Um, FS group is okay. SOFP and SOPL. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So let's bring FS group to somewhere here. So FS group tells us what is an asset, what is an equity, what's a liability. So, so like that. Now, um, it's interesting that this um Excel does not have numbers. Assuming it has numbers, you would have seen how everything is being reported in front and grouped. Of course, people that know how to be part of that to group their amounts and summarize it for you. So when you are preparing your actual FS, using all those notes to the account, you can easily do test whether it is correct or not. You can easily tell us, okay, this, this PPE that I mapped is not correct because something must have missed, missed out there. So that's just basically what I'm going to teach us today. So um, this is everything. and um, doesn't take time. So I can decide to put account description if I want to. But ideally, I don't need it again because it would have grouped them under this part. And when I need to go further into what is there, I can double click on any of these to get me the GL breakdown. So um, let me see what I can include here. Um, Pivot, where is our TB manual again? So nothing else is very relevant at the moment except for the numbers that are missing. Uh, so maybe subsequently we can include the numbers or I can get a TB that has a number that I can just put it there. All right, so that's basically it. So to make it more interesting to, or to make it more relatable, you can just go, you can see that this is kind of scattered because normally we have your assets, we have your liability and we have your equity based on presentation. 
then we have the Iranian experience. So you can come here to the TV panel, um, add some things here. Let's say our assets should be number one and do something like this, number one. Right, come here. Then liabilities should be number three. Number three. Then equity should be number four. Um, so we have finished the actual work. This one is just to, to help us see how the presentation can be better aligned to the normal FS presentation. So we have revenue um, number. The reason why it, it is scattered that way is because pivot will arrange them in a chronological order, right? So it's possible that some of those items are not aligned the way you want them. Number five. Then we have number six. So what happens now to the pie box? This is what happens to our pie box. So we can go back to our pie box now, refresh it. So you see, it, it rearranges the information. So asset is now up, liabilities next. Okay, then you know, it's supposed to be the other way around. So I can easily correct this to bring my equity here so that our liabilities should be down. Then we have your revenue reported, and then we have your expenses. Even though that's revenue, you see that other income is still coming before revenue, which is not supposed to be. So we can easily correct that too. Just go back here, re rearrange the next line of items too. What should come first under assets? So non current assets should come first, like that. Just do everything and then you're good to go. So let me just do it for the sake of people that might want to use this approach subsequently. Um, then we have the current assets to. Um, this should be part of the one. Then we have current liabilities should be two. Um, no, 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 no. Yeah, two. Yes, correct. In this place, we are going to just group them based on assets classes. So this should be one. Then equity. Equity should come first within any such agreement. Let me see that order. No, no. So equity is number one. The reason for doing all this is just for our presentation to be in line with the regular FS. So, and then we have um, three. Okay, so we have revenue first in this place too. Then we have um, other income as number two. Okay, good. So let's refresh now. Let's see how it comes out. Uh, so uh, yes, our assets, under our asset, we have non-current assets first, then we have to be correct. We have current assets, we have items, we have liabilities, we have current and non-current. This one needs to be rearranged somehow. I don't know why this one is coming before two years, but of course, it's just formatting into it, I know. Um, Let's see. Equity is fine now. Yeah, this is well arranged. Okay, the utility is still coming before this also. We need to correct that too. And finally, we have the revenue. Yeah, of course. So this is simply how to prepare. You have prepared two. Don't forget, see it here. First one here. SOFP and SOPL. By the time the numbers are reporting in front, everything will tie to zero. Right? Um, I would have used a full TV, but of course, be subsequently we can use that. On our training. All right, thank you guys, and um, do well to subscribe and like our YouTube channel. Of course, I will be posting more stuff like this subsequently. Thank you very much, and bye.